Hey, okay, I'm going to show you a little quick tutorial so you kind of know what to do with uh, rolling since it's your first time painting. I just painted this room only a couple weeks ago. Finally got around to painting it. I finally had the money to get the paint for it. So I'm going to show you a little quick tutorial. I have, I just grabbed my roller from the basement and my uh, two inch brush angled. You can see it's angled. That's important and I'll show you why. All right, so I'm going to have to angle this right. So when you're cutting in, cut in is basically you're cutting the paint into the side. Don't ask me where the phrase came from. I have no idea. Uh, so they call it cut in. And what you do is you take a little bit of paint on just on the very edge. You can, can you see where my marks are where the paint is? That's how high the paint went. Total. That's it. Just that. Just right there. That's it. That's how where I put the paint on. Yes, over time it'll get a little bit more down, down the edges, but try to not do that. Keep it right there. So you get a little bit of the paint on the edge, like, you know, um, you know, you've got the can, you just dip down, but you don't dip down straight. You just take it like that and push it into the can. Just get a little bead on the edge. That's about all you need is a little bead on the edge. And you take that bead on that edge. So it's on this side, pretend it's on this side. And then here's my cut in. Now keep in mind the, the angle right here, the part, on the wall is where the paint is. All right, so this bottom part, uh, the opposite of where my pinky is, that's the bottom part. So you take the paint, you press it in to the edge and then pull down. Not hard, you don't have to do it hard. Like this, you press in and pull down. So when you're pressing in, you're not pressing like this or anything. You're just lightly, just slightly in and then pull down. You don't really use the tip for much unless you need to like really get detailed work. That's why angles are so important because the tip's kind of useful for angle work. I don't know if you can see. I'm not really sure I can do that, with the, you know, very well here. So push in, pull down. Then get a little bit more, get another bead on the side. Push in, pull down. And going around these things, again, here the paint's on the, on the side next to the wall here. You push in lower than the thing, go behind it, press in really hard on this and go up. Go like that. So you're basically using the tip as the last part that touches. You push in just, pa just past the line like that. On this other side, get the paint, yeah, pull down and pull like that. Getting into little grooves is very easy. All you have to do is just press, you know, get just get yourself a dab of paint on the edge and just go down like that. You know, nothing big on that way. Uh, so yeah, going around edges, you want to go around the edges of the door, on the floor, way down there, or go, you know, bead and then just pull. Uh, take down the curtains, take down everything that's on the walls. Um, don't go around paintings and stuff. Take everything down. Don't be lazy. Do it right. Uh, going around nails, you just kind of, like there's a nail right there. And you want to do is just uh, take that little bead, put a little bit of the bead on the tip and just go around it a little bit, pull it out. Pull it out, pull it out, you know, make it all nice and everything so you don't see the old color on behind it. You will when it dries, but that's okay. That's what the second coat is for. And yes, second coat does involve doing this twice. First time, then roll. Second time, second time, and then roll. <laughs> if you want to do it right and, you know, you're covering over a really, really dark color with a lighter color, yeah, you're going to need to do it. Um, if you're going with a like a red, because red is see-through naturally, you'll need to do it. Um, when you're, if you're painting doors, oh, uh, that gets to the roller. Oh, sorry. Let me get to the roller part here. So roller. Oh boy. All right. So I don't want to show you this. Basically start from the top and go down and do some V's. Obviously don't go over top of your nails. I'm just showing you. So go in a V shape like that. Obviously you get the idea. Don't go over the frames of the windows and stuff. Get close to it. Notice how close I am. That's as close as you need to get. 
like half an inch is as close as you need to get. Don't go any closer than half inch. You can see the brush lines through it. That's why you do a second coat. Um, so yeah, you, you do V's at first, get the paint on the wall. And then what you do is go down nice and even and go down in the middle and over to the edge and go down. Don't, don't press hard. None of this, none of that. No, lightly, not super lightly, not super hard. Sorry, I had to pause there. Somebody was coming in. <laughs> I have a couple of people that live with me. So yeah, if that helps the roller, good. Um, when it comes to doors, and you said that you were doing uh, uh, doors and windows and stuff, with the trim, all you have to do is get a bead on the side and pull it down, just like that, you know, lightly, but not so it's dripping. By the way, try not to leave drips. Don't put, that's too much paint. You got drips, you got too much paint. Obviously, like when you're rolling and stuff, if you got drips, you got too much paint. Uh, if you do it with a brush and, you, and it drips down, you get too much paint on your brush, just a light bead. Not, not much more than this much on the, on the brush. Do it, you can always get a little bit better with it and do more and more. Go light for your first time. And then for the edging, this, this stupid edge right here, what you do, so you press in and pull up. Don't press hard on the walls or you're gonna get that white paint on the walls that you've already painted. So, you know, you maybe you put a little bit of that bead of paint from your brush, transfer it so it's dripping down the edge. And then you catch it with the brush and pull up with it like that. And, you know, you can go around. Obviously, you don't have to take off the locks and stuff. If you want to loosen them up a little bit, that's cool, but you don't have to. Just get real good at pressing in and pulling it around. The opposite way of the tip, usually. I'm a lefty, but you get the idea. Um, for the love of God, do not paint hinges or anything metal. Metal and paint is a no-no. Never freaking paint hinges. Do you have, am I clear? Never paint hinges, don't paint doorknobs, don't paint anything metal. Little knobs and stuff, never. Don't paint anything that is plastic or metal. That takes a special type of paint. It's usually a spray instead of an actual paint in that case. So you use spray and even then you still don't paint hinges. Regardless of how bad the hinges look, replace the dang hinges. Don't paint them because the paint gets in the cracks. If the cracks, if the paint gets in these cracks here, Guess what that hinge is gonna end up doing? Squeaking like hell. And you keep on putting WD-40 in it and it's not gonna do anything because it's being stopped by the paint which is rubbing against each other and that's what causes the squeak. Replace the hinges if you have to, never paint it. Okay, I think I've made that clear, huh? <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, going around, I think that kind of gives you the, the general tutorial of what to do. And when you're rolling, okay, I don't have one of those tiny rollers that I was telling you about, but literally the thing is this long and uh, this maximum of this big, like an inch, the uh, inch, you know, diameter. The, and you have to have a very thin nap. This is that fuzzy nap thing that I was talking about. Get a fuzzy nap that is less than this. This is a very high nap roller. You have to have about half of this nap. So whatever the smallest nap is. And if it's got too big of a nap where it says three eighths, three eighths is too big. Half inch is too big. You have to go with something way smaller. So, okay, and quarter inch is definitely too big. So you need to have something literally like the space between like that much nap. If that makes sense, a millimeter to maximum, that's it. So that right there, that's what causes the nice finish on these doors. And even that will still cause a little bit of finish to happen. But what you don't want is this finish here, which is slightly bumpy. That's bad for doors. You don't paint it like that. You have to paint it with a very smooth nap thing. Foam rollers are known for that. Unfortunately, uh, I don't like foam rollers because to me they don't put enough paint on. It's weird. It's like it's too thin. So finding yourself that little nap thing is great. But if you need to do, do a foam roller because that's all they have, then go for it. You're just going to at least be doing two coats on that door. Just so you know. 
Uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. And of course you can do touch-ups later on and you can do touch-ups where, where uh, there's these things called holidays. Holidays are where you're missing spots and it's like little teensy spots where you can still see the paint through it. Those are called holidays uh, in, in painter's terms. Or it's called the, the roller took a holiday. Uh, <laughs> so what you do is you take your brush, done. Uh, there, there's nothing to it. You might see some shine differences after the fact. Whoop de doo. Um, professionals, obviously, you don't want that. But you know, if it, you're not a professional, so it does not matter. Um, yeah, I hope that gives you a very good first lesson in painting. Um, I almost forgot cleaning the brushes. These can be cleaned if you take care of them. They can last freaking forever. The, these high quality brushes, this is a Valspar brush, these things never, ever fall apart on you. You might see a few bristles come out, but nothing more after the first or second time using it. So what you do, I am not sure how I'm going to do this properly, so I'm going to have to do it this way. All right, so it's under the water. The water's coming from here, okay? And what you do Obviously, you're going to spray paint all over your sink. That's fine. Your sink can be cleaned out. Just don't let it dry. Just clean the sink after you wash your brushes and rollers. Simple. So what you do is you get the paint out. Always go outward. Never push it inward. And when you're cleaning it out, you know, you can spread out the bristles. It's under the water. Water's coming from up here. You spread out the bristles and, and working that paint out. And then once you've got the paint out of it and it looks okay that's where you want to take care of any of these those drips that have come on the side so what you do is you actually do force water in at this point but not before just when the paint's all gone you think the paint's all gone then that's when you want to force water into the top part here to get out any potential paint the binders not the color but the binders so will stick around as long as possible so you just go ahead and you twist and Bend the bristles like this. So you get some water in here. You know, the, the water's dripping down here or on here. Uh, you know, not the opposite way of this. And and uh, you just, instead of squeezing the water out like this, what you do is you squeeze the bristles and bend them and make them pop back like that. And you even want to twist the bristles. I can't really show that. I'm twisting it. So you're literally squeezing and twisting and that'll force water in and it'll force. And if you see little bits of white coming out this bottom part here, you still got binders in the brush. Keep doing it. Twist, twist, water, twist, turn it around, water, twist, water, twist, boom. Once you can't see any binders anymore and it's just clear water, you're good. So that's cleaning that. These things. These things can be, this one's, this one was washed. These things can be washed if you want to wash them because you want to reuse them for multiple rooms because you're doing more than one and you want to save some money. It's going to take you forever, but they can be cleaned. So what you do is you have it under the water. Water's this way and just swoop. Over and over and over. Twist around. And you just pull the water out, let more water in, pull it out, water in, pull it out. You're going to have paint all over your hands. You can wash your hands off and keep doing it. It's going to take forever. I'm letting you know it takes me at least 30 minutes per roller to wash it. Also, you can also take it off. Wash this thing out because paint gets on these and these. So you want to wash that off, wash that off, wash this off, wash this, wash this. Anything, anything you can wash off. You can even scrape the paint off with your fingernails a little bit. You can do all of that. I haven't, but you know, I'm done with painting for this for a while in this place. I only got one more thing to paint in this place. So this thing, squeeze, roll, roll, roll. Paint can even get inside here. You can wash that out real quick. Roll, roll, roll. Squeezing, going lower and lower and lower each time. And boom. After about 30 minutes, as long as you can't see any more white stuff coming out, and when you do that and you put some in your hand, a little bit of that water that's squeezed out from it, if it goes into your hand and you see it's white, it's not done yet. It's going to take forever. 
but you can save money doing it. So <laughs> it's up to you if you want to, um, if you want to wash these out or just toss them and get another one. For me, I'm big about recycling and reusing stuff, so I like to wash them. And you can wash them three, four times before they pretty much fall apart on you and you can't really do it anymore. That's fine. Um, obviously, you wash anything that you've used. Use drop cloths. Use tape, especially around these. Use some tape if you want to. I don't have to use tape anymore because I've been professionally painting for years. Um, I'm no longer a painter. I haven't painted in, besides my own house. I haven't painted professionally in eight years. But before I left the country for teaching English and before I'm doing what I'm doing now, career consulting, um, I was doing it professionally for my own company. But the economic crash pretty much took me down. So I hope this helped. This is a long video, but good luck.